I didn't expect, usually five people hang around for one of these, so I've got, what I've got is pretty visual, um, but I might have to pack you in a little tightly. We can do some things that uh, that everybody can see if, if we've got something that you need to get eyes on, uh, I can slow down and, and we'll move it around. Um, the, the reason this whole discussion came up was, shh, it's alright, oh, no, it's okay. Uh, the reason this whole thing came up is there were some guys having some trouble uh, doing some electrical testing uh, with, you know, what meter, what do you have, uh, how, do, how do I test. So what I wanted to do right off the bat was just go over a bunch of different test equipment that you can use pretty much to do the same job. Um, you know, Volkswagens are relatively simple on the scale of uh, you know, on a, a modern car. As far as a wiring harness goes, they, they've done such a good job and they kept it so simple that anywhere in the harness that you can get into that you can see, you can usually figure out what wire you're dealing with. Um, but if you get into your more complicated projects, then you know it, it's going to be more difficult to track it down. The easiest, uh, or one of the easiest testers there are, uh, is a simple continuity tester. And this fancy tool here that costs probably three bucks at Harbor Freight and probably cost me, uh, I don't know, 53 bucks after I paid it off on a snap-on truck, who knows. Um, what it really is, is it's, it's a battery, a flashlight bulb, and a, and a chunk of wire in a fancy package. Inside there's two AA or AAA batteries. They get down, they touch this pointy nail on the end, but to test continuity on a wire, uh, flip to ground, and then anywhere in that circuit that you find that ground, that light's going to light. Define continuity. Okay. Continuity is a fancy word for continuous circuit, or the travel, you want, you want to go real deep, the travel of electrons from, it, basically, electrical power is moving electrons, traveling, from positive to negative in your 12 volt system. Okay? When you complete a circuit, whether you do it with a light bulb, a wire, the body of the car, the chassis of the car, electricity is traveling through that. Part of the reason that your car rusts while it's sitting in your garage and it's not exposed to anything is due to the electrical system. You'll hear, you'll hear things about the zinc sacrifice blocks, things like that. There are actually ways that you could use the car's electrical system to prevent it from corroding. I mean, we've all been to those websites about that stuff. Okay, but what I want to teach you how to do is using simple tools to, uh, to uh, find a, a problem or to uh, install an electrical accessory, something along those lines, give you the basics of, of how all this stuff works. Continuity tester. Uh, I have a fuse on this circuit somewhere. If I pull this, well, I won't pull the fuse, but without power, and I, this is my battery today, it's a power supply, I have the ability to turn it off. So now what I've done essentially is disconnected the battery. I'm having a problem where my headlight doesn't work. I know where the wire is somewhere on, in the circuit uh, as far up to the fuse box. I can put that continuity test uh, clip on that lead on the fuse box, okay, and I can poke the wire anywhere along the circuit, following that wire down, that light's going to light, and I can take that all the way up to the bulb. If that light from that tab on the fuse, or if this thing lights from the tab on the fuse box all the way to the bulb socket, your bulb is probably bad. By the way, looking at a bulb, is not 100% guarantee that you're going to know that that, that that bulb is good or bad. Um, a continuity tester will allow you to check a bulb. I dare not take that bulb out of there because it's, I, I put it in there and I know that it was a, it, a it's, they're real easy when they're on the car. When you take one of those sockets off of the car, uh, you, 
get yourself some trouble. I'm going to use this fuse here if I can. Now, there's no power. I've disconnected. All right, I'm going to do it right in place. On the back of your bowl, 1157 has two, two uh, tabs. Okay? <laughs> Touching across those two tabs on 1157 bulb is not going to do anything at all. The way that that bulb works is there's a small filament in there that when you energize it, you put positive to one side, negative to the other, that, that wire gets hot, just like a welder, except that they've figured out how much current that, that, that thing's going to draw, and they've got it just right so that that wire doesn't melt, it, it glows. And what it's doing is it's burning off that uh, electricity or those electrons as heat, but you see it in the form of visible light. What you need to do to test a bulb is go to the side of the bulb and test each one of the tabs on the bottom of the bulb individually. If the bulb is good, you'll get a light from, from each one of those individual tabs. 1156 bulb, side to the single tab, there's no confusion. Check the bulb. If you've checked the bulb and then you've got this continuously all the way back to the fuse block, I'd be uh, suspect of the fuse block itself. Uh, check the fuse in there to make sure that that's working. You can, you can test it off the other side. One of those things is going to be bad. Um, if it's not, now you're dealing with ground. And that's the fun part of our cars because uh, ground is the other half of the electrical circuit. And you'll find that rusty metal or steel in general is a very poor conductor. Now hopefully this battery is low enough that you'll be able to see a difference. This is a spring out of a, a, uh, an old window shade. It's high carbon steel which is just a lousy resistor. The reason the wires in our cars are made out of copper is because electricity flows through it much better. By the way, the, you notice some of the circuits in your car are real thick wire, some are thin wire. Most of you I'm sure know the reason for that. The starter draws a lot of current. It draws a lot more energy than a, uh, a light bulb or the little light on your dashboard. Um, current is the amount of electrons flowing through your wire at the same time. Um, an easy demonstration, let me, let me give you that one real quick. If I take this water pipe and I pump water through here as fast as I can, okay, that water's going to come and it's going to it's going to flow to a certain distance on the ground. If I take that pipe and split it off and still pump the same amount of water through here, what's going to happen to these two streams? They're going to drop by half because what I've done is I've made a larger conductor for the water to travel through. So if we take water pipe or electric wire, think of it in the terms of current being water flowing through a pipe. If I put my thumb over the end of a single pipe, I'm providing resistance, what's going to happen is less water is going to come through. Okay, we're going to get a backup inside here. Okay, yeah, it'll, it'll squirt further, but it doesn't have as much water. And what we're really dealing with is the amount of water. It's going to take me longer to fill up a bucket. So if you think in those terms, you put an electric seat in your car and run a thin wire to it. That electric seat's got a really strong motor. It needs a lot of current. Okay? You're not going to be able to get enough current through that wire. The wire is going to heat up. Okay? Eventually, it's going to melt. It can even cause a fire. You want to see pictures of my... What's that? Exactly. Well, what happens if the current draw goes up, the amperage draw grows up, goes up. Now, there's a good way to protect the wire from an overdraw of current, and a simple way to protect your wire is to put a fuse in. You never want